Hello, my wonderful friends, and it's time once again for a story. This one comes to us from the Neckbeard Story subreddit. This is from Reddit user Hockstetter. It's an interesting name. My not-so-fun time dating a neckbeard. It's always the worst whenever you're stuck in a relationship with them, isn't it? Yeah. I share your pain. I've been there. Not necessarily with a neckbeard, but the other one. Let's read this story. So, to preface this post, this is my only time making an actual story post. It's also being typed on a phone, and I'm sorry if the format's bad or weird or confusing or whatever. We'll call the neckbeard in question Jay. This story will also contain some NSFW wording. It'll be a warning before that part of the story if you want to skip it. Uh, please use they, them pronouns for me if you choose to talk or discuss me in the comments. Thank you. Oh, well, I'll keep that in mind. So when I first started high school, I had little to no friends at all. Most of the ones I had in middle school moved or simply had no interest in being friends anymore. I didn't really particularly mind it, but I do have a tendency to talk a lot, so I kind of like talking to people. I made a friend around the first couple of weeks, called Z. He was pretty nice. I didn't really have any issues with him, other than the occasional normal down mood most high school students have. But, you know, moving on, he had this friend, Jay, that I got along with, and I would sit and talk with both of them. Jay wasn't really open about his whole neck beardiness up front, of course. The basics I knew about him was that he liked anime, hated furries, and liked Z at least a little bit. As the time we were in high school progressed, Z moved on to his preferred group of friends, and I moved on with mine. We still talked to each other occasionally, but I mainly hung around Jay and his friends. Like any normal group of friends in high school, we'd make jokes, call each other names, but we knew when it was playful and nobody really meant it. It got progressively weirder when Jay would make sexual jokes about me, around the time I came out as transgender, not binary. I stupidly dismissed this behavior because I didn't want to cause an argument. I was very much unable to handle arguing in high school. Jay was very much into video games, anime, and dark humor and the normal things that neckbeards are usually interested in. But he was also pretty competitive when it came to liking things. He found very ableist and anti-autistic humor his favorite. Classy guy. Which confused me, but I pretended to enjoy it for the sake of the friendship. He often complained about leftists and SJWs and generally anyone who would stand up for general human rights. He often made very racist jokes. Well, isn't he just lovely? Mainly towards black people. Mm-hmm. And use the excuse that, quote, he has black friends, so it was okay. Oh, my God. He also tried to act really tough and stand up for me when his other friends would joke around, which made me incredibly uncomfortable. I should have taken the too far jokes as a hint that I shouldn't be hanging around with this guy, but I was very clingy once I got friends that I could enjoy being around. Which is where everything kind of went downhill. Jay had found out months into our friendship that I was pretty clingy, and he decided to take advantage of this by asking me out, which I also stupidly said yes to. I struggle with mental health issues, and this did cause me to mistake platonic affection for romantic affection to him which he had apparently taken into account. Mm hmm Now, I'm not into shaming people for their appearances. Example, the typical neckbeard appearance people describe. And Jay was not actually that bad looking, but he did definitely lack in personal hygiene and facial hair grooming for someone who was 16. Though he often used his autism as an excuse for this, I just never really cared enough to question it, honestly. So... When Jay and I began our relationship, I was really attached to him as I had really bad attachment problems when I was younger. I followed him everywhere in between classes, would end up very close to him at lunch, despite the B.O., and cling to him. I even ignored his sexual comments after me coming out as asexual as well, brushing them off as just jokes and nothing more. This was around the time that he started to show me his actual personality. Uh, let's see. This is the section where the NSFW themes will come in. Oh, buckle in, kids. 
I would sometimes have him over at my house to hang out, and he would constantly joke about how women belonged in the kitchen. Real fucking classy. That trans people were cancer. What a fucking asshole. And that I was the only exception. Hit him with something blunt, please. And about how, let's call them maps, if you know what that word means, were over-stigmatized. Kill him now. He would also try to talk to me about the types of hentai and video game porn that he liked. Again, knowing that I'm asexual, and sex repulsed me, in my case. After about a year, I moved into an apartment with my mother, and it was closer to where Jay lived than my last house. He started inviting me over to his house once I began online schooling, due to the public school in my area being kind of bad. I did enjoy the first couple of visits. We just talked and went to the park a few blocks from his house and walked around. It was relatively normal. It was when he started to text me more rather than talk in person, due to not being in school, that he started to ask me about doing sexual favors for him. Mm-hmm. Jay would constantly talk about how he thought that it was, quote, hot that I was a guy and a girl. Real fucking classy. I do not identify with either, not even then. And he would talk about the parts of my body that made me incredibly dysphoric in a very sexual way that made me kind of nauseous and anxious. He compared me to hentai characters and often talked about the different sexual activities he wanted to do with me, despite me telling him I didn't like the way any of that sounded. I had told him several times in the text that I was very uncomfortable, that I was scared and repulsed by sexual intimacy, and that I did not like talking about it. He would get all upset about it after I told him, and then guilt trip me into it by putting himself down, and I eventually just half-assed some sexual commentary back to him, mostly to get him to shut up. It seemed to work for a while, until I eventually went to visit him again. The state of this boy's room was really gross to me, and definitely not the thing that would put someone in the mood to do anything sexual. His closet was piled with dirty and semi-clean clothes, his floor was covered in trash, and it smelled just like straight-up dog in the house, and it was a little odd to me that he could be so explicit. We would cuddle often when I came over, because I did enjoy platonic closeness, but then he would eventually start moving way too close up against me. Eventually he did inform me that he had an erection, and he wanted me to touch him. Stop it. Get some help. I was obviously very uninterested, and I tried to talk my way out of that, even using the old, oh, I'm too tired excuse to try and get out of this situation. He just kept complaining that uh, I could control it, and that he needed to do something to get rid of it. And I eventually gave in and did it because I wanted him to shut up about it. To this day, I refuse to date cis men. Because of this situation, it has scarred me and scared me so much. I much prefer the other non-binary, asexual individuals. I did eventually get out of this relationship, and during the last few months, I was in another relationship with someone who made slash makes me feel much more safe. But admittedly, this was not fair to either of them. I just did not want to face Jay's angry outburst at me when I did try to break it off, and I was genuinely scared of him. Not that this all makes what I did okay, I fully take responsibility for those actions. Ooh, boy. That, oh my goodness. Okay, so, first off, OP, Hockstetter, that, I am so fucking sorry you had to go through all that. That is awful. That That is just the fucking worst. This guy sounds like an absolute fucking tool. More than a tool. He's a goddamn tool bag. Fuck it, he's a hardware store. But either way, that doesn't excuse, you know the shit that he did and while I understand um, you're not comfortable with how this whole situation ended I can also understand your fear behind it because you know when you're dealing with someone who obviously won't take no for an answer 
yeah, I can understand being absolutely afraid of someone like that. And I totally understand the uh, want to stay away from cis men in general because of that. Like, yeah, no, you obviously went through something terrible, so of course. You know? Like, that totally fucking makes sense. But this dude was like a total fucking douche. That, that is just not okay. Again, I personally think that the best reaction, which I don't think that our wonderful OP here would have done, would have been, you know, something blunt and a very quick motion. Just take it out, you know what I'm saying? Just right there, there you go. But then again, you know, I'm a horrible, horrible influence on all of you. But I do love you all. Uh, this was a hell of a story, and that was, wow, you know... You really hope, because of the ages of everyone involved, that as time goes on, things get better, but as we've learned through some Neckbeard stories, it's not always the case. I always hope for the best, though. I certainly do hope for the best. So with all that being said, that is the end of this video. Thank you all for being here, and I love you all so very, very much. If you would, please consider like, comment, and subscribing. And, uh, I have a... Ko-Fi and uh, merch store if you'd like to keep the lights on in this place so I can keep doing things like this. Greatly appreciate it. There's also a stream every Saturday. Maybe you'll see me there. I read a lot of really, really weird stuff. Even weirder than the stuff I usually read. Which says something, doesn't it? Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. I love you all so very much. Goodbye!